Hey, what is up guys, Nick the Gamer here. So my first regular Nintendo Switch accessories video has reached over a thousand views. And considering the fact that it's been a little while since I've made that video, and that there's a whole lot more accessories to look at, here's the sequel. Links to buy all these will be in the description below. So let's take a look. So the first accessory I'd like to look at is a headset. This one in particular is the Logitech G933 Artemis Spectrum. What makes this gaming headset stand out from the others, apart from being wireless, is the fact that it has built-in audio mixing. So you can hook up the wireless dongle directly into the Nintendo Switch via USB, and then connect your phone that's either using the Nintendo Switch Online app or Discord into the headset using AUX. On the back of the USB dongle, there is an extra AUX input, so if you really want, you can add in your hi-fi system to the mix. I adore this feature on the headset. It allows me to hear both chat audio from Discord on my computer, and game audio from my Switch. Unfortunately, this is only effective in docked mode, mostly because the headset does not support any Bluetooth connectivity. But other than that, the headset itself is pretty good. The sports mesh ear cups allow long gaming sessions without my head overheating. Its maximum wireless range is pretty long at 32 feet, it has a very long battery life at around 10 hours if you disable the RGB lights, and while the microphone isn't as clear as I would like it to be, it's good enough to detect most of the things I'm saying. The regular price of this headset goes for $150. However, at Best Buy online and in store, it seems as though as every other week the headset goes on for $99 or below. And if you can get it at that price, I definitely recommend it. It's a very decent wireless headset, and the audio mixing feature is a nice touch. The next accessory up is kind of interesting. It's a D-pad, but on a Joy-Con. This controller was made by Hori, and it goes for around $25, which is half the price of an actual Joy-Con from Nintendo. This is mostly because Hori had to cut a couple corners to reach that price. For one, you can't use this controller wirelessly. You're only supposed to use it in handheld mode. Along with that, there's no motion controls and no HD rumble. Along with that, some of the buttons feel different. The minus and capture button are rubber instead of hard plastic. The joystick, however, does feel very similar to the original Joy-Cons. Now, because 85% of the Joy-Con's features are gone, the controller feels very light. The D-pad itself actually feels really good. Unlike the 3DS, where it's very clicky, this D-pad feels squishy, kind of like the original Game Boy Advance's D-pad. This Joy-Con comes in several different colors. In Japan, there's a solid blue, the controller I have is a Super Mario design, there's a Zelda one, and Jesus Christ, why does that one exist? Disgusting! Now originally, I wasn't going to pick up this controller at all. I don't play that many 2D platformer games, and the NES collection sucks conky dong. But recently, a new game called Tetris 99 launched. This game controls differently from past Tetris games. Instead of the joystick being a way of moving the Tetronomos, you have to use a D-pad, or in the Joy-Cons case, the face buttons. And while the face buttons are responsive, considering how fast your reflexes have to be in order to gain ahead in Tetris 99, my thumbs were not having the best of time. Luckily, when I was playing Tetris 99 on camera, my thumb felt pretty great. Granted, I still lost a couple times. I still had a more enjoyable experience with this controller compared to the face buttons. The only real issue I have with this Joy-Con, apart from some of the missing features, is the release button on the back. It has a different mold compared to the official Joy-Cons. This is only really an issue if you use some of the cases that have very precise cutouts for the Switch, because they won't fit, meaning that if you want to use this Joy-Con on the go, you're going to have to carry this Joy-Con in a separate pocket. But apart from those issues, if you play a lot of 2D platformers, fighting games, or puzzle games like Tetris, I recommend this controller a lot. The D-pad feels great and very responsive. Alright guys, here's a pro tip about life. If you deem yourself as a useless person in society, just remember that somebody had to come up with a concept for this next Nintendo Switch accessory. These were officially released by Nintendo themselves, and they're battery packs designed for the Joy-Cons. You slip two AA batteries into each grip, then slide the Joy-Con into the grips in order to activate the charge. Now you must be wondering why these are useless in the first place. Well, the Joy-Cons have a battery life of around 20 hours, and I don't think a normal person would be playing a video game for 20 hours straight. And while its intended purpose may be useless, I think I found another use for this. 
Because of the fact that the Joy-Con is now given a more round shape, I find this accessory more enjoyable to use when playing games like 1-2 Switch, ARMS, or that boxing game. Considering the fact that no one is buying this, it could be under wicked clearance by the time this video is out. Last price I saw for these were around $9. I got this from a Secret Santa gift exchange. If you're the one remaining person that still plays ARMS, I recommend this accessory, but just wait for it to go on sale. Alright, back to some good accessories, and I get to finally talk about Amiibos. Amiibos are Nintendo's line of Toys to Life figurines. Depending on the game, these can have different functions, including extra items, costumes, or in these figures, which are from the Super Smash Bros. line, an extra fighter to train up to level 50, and spirits to upgrade your character's strength, speed, or defense, with some side effects. Now, I freaking love these things, and the newest ones that were released for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate are fantastic. The figures are very high quality, and the detail is insane. It's pretty clear why the price has hiked up from $13 to $16. Now, these are insanely addicting to collect for, so if you have no self-control, I would not recommend buying these. They will consume your money, space in your house, pretty much everything else like Amiibas. However, if you are planning on buying all the Smash Bros. Amiibos, good luck with that. Finding them is going to be easy because Nintendo's restocking them, but paying for every single fighter? Yikes. So this next accessory doesn't add any functionality to the Switch, but it does look nice. This is an LED dock shield by PDP. So you put your dock on top of this other dock, and depending on the mode, you can have a single color, flash through multiple colors at a very fast rate, have it blink in and out in a breathing style fashion, or my personal favorite, the rainbow effect. This type of shield comes in different designs. The first pack came with a Zelda Sheikah Slate design, and a Super Mario Odyssey design that has all the worlds within the game. Recently, PDP released a Pokemon version of this pack. It comes with a plate that has the design of Pikachu, and another one that makes me have a migraine. However, if you don't like any of these designs, you can go onto Etsy and have someone make a custom plate for you. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the Sheikah Slate plate with the PDP Dark Shield, and it pairs really nicely with all my other RGB equipment. So this final Switch accessory is my personal favorite case. Ever since an incident where I broke my first Nintendo Switch, I've been very paranoid on making sure my Switch is as safe as possible when traveling in bags. I'm pretty sure this case will put me at ease. This is the Amazon Basics Vault Case. The outside is made out of a very hard plastic, with rubber on the edges acting like shock absorbers, and the inside has a perfect cutout for the Nintendo Switch with the original Joy-Cons attached, the buttons on top, and the cartridge flap that holds around 8 games. If you roll up to anything with this case, you mean business. What you got in there? In here? Doom. The only thing I don't really like about this case is indeed the cartridge flap. It's stiff but flimsy at the same time. Also, it's kind of difficult to slot the cards into the game case itself. At least I have the option to unscrew it if it gets in my way too many times. Another thing I don't like is the big Amazon Basics logo on top of the case, although you could cover it with a sticker or Sharpie. The case doesn't flex at all, meaning that I can throw this into pretty much any bag and it will protect my Switch from being bent by a bunch of books. This case costs around 20 bucks, which is actually pretty cheap compared to other offerings, especially compared to the Hori's aluminum case, which doesn't even protect the Switch from hard falls. Some people may look at this case as unnecessary, but to me, this is my go-to. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you guys are new and you've enjoyed what you've seen, go ahead and subscribe. Be sure to follow me on Twitter to see updates on the channel and anything else I'm doing in life. And while you wait for me to post again, why not look at my past videos? Last time, I did a review of the Sega Genesis Classics Collection. Anyways, I'm Nick the Gamer, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.